In this CAD for Newbies, I'll show you three approaches for removing the need for support material in your 3D printed designs. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse and I do apologize if you can hear the rain outside. Today has been absolutely insane, but I got such a positive feedback from the previous Cab for Newbies tutorial video that I really wanted to get this one out as soon as possible to you guys to help you make your designs better for 3D printing. And this one's all about removing the need for support material. In my Fallout Inspired 3D printer, I specifically set out to remove the need to have support material turned on when printing the parts. And I did this for several reasons. Firstly, adding support material increases time for the print, but also increases material usage but also it increases the cleanup of that print and cleaning up support material off single extruded machines is not really perfect and you end up with a pretty horrible surface that might not be as accurate on some machines versus others and just overall you don't want it in designs that you want to make work straight off the machines. But you can get away with not having support material using some really simple design tweaks in your actual 3D model. So let's fire up Fusion 360 and get started with the first one, which is sacrificial bridging. As in the previous video where I talked about getting better accuracy in your 3D printed holes, this is my Fallout inspired 3D printer build, the Vault Tech Personal Fabricator. And as I said, I did everything in my power to make all of these parts print without support material. And the largest and arguably most complex part of the whole build is the base, this part here, it prints all in one go without needing supports. And there's a few things I did in this to make that possible, but the main one was sacrificial bridging. So take a look at this part here. This is where the Z-axis motor bolts in. And you'll notice that as this builds up, there's a pretty severe overhang where the holes for the motor actually start to form. On an FDM 3D printer, that's just gonna start drawing holes in midair and you're gonna end up with a very poor surface finish that's gonna droop down and result in a really nasty finish on the part and the motor might not even nest into that area properly. To fix this on an FDM machine without having it to build supports from the bottom, you can actually bridge across. If these holes weren't here, it would have no issue building it because the string of plastic can go right across and it's fully supported on both sides. So to take advantage of that property, I drew in a very thin surface. How thin? Well, it's actually only 0.3 millimeters thick, as you can see here. And this surface effectively creates a bridge. When you go into the slicer, you can see that this bridge is only one layer thick. Remember, I sliced this whole thing at 0.3 millimeter layer height. So 0.3 is just one strand of plastic thick, and it goes across and forms a support, a scaffold, for that next layer with the holes to then be formed and built. Of course, this leaves a very thin piece of plastic in place where you want a hole. So how do you remove it? Well, it's sacrificial. When the print's complete, you take it off the machine and I just used a Stanley knife to cut it away. It's very, very weak because it's only one layer thick. And then you can just punch out where it is with the smaller holes and attach the motor in place. Obviously with bridging, you do get a small amount of droop when it goes across a large distance, this is going across the distance of a NEMA 17, roughly 50 millimeters or so. It's a very small amount of droop from the plastic, but it's nothing to really worry about. It doesn't affect my accuracy too much, and it means that I can get these parts done with no supports. Bridging is the name of the game when it comes to designing models for 3D printing on FDM machines that don't need support material, and I employed it in all sorts of areas in this model. For example, here, where there's a bridge across this gap, um, this curve obviously starts off pretty steep, but I've got a flat area there, so it doesn't need support material. And of course, the sacrificial bridging I just mentioned. But what if you can't get away with using bridging? What if you have a part that literally is in thin air and needs support, but you don't want to turn support material on for the whole print? Well, you can design in your own support. And that's what I did for this part. This is the component on the 3D printer that holds the X-axis motor and is attached to the lead screw of the Z-axis. So it moves up and down and holds the motor for the left and right, the X-axis movement. So it's a very complicated piece. And in the previous video, I talked about these hole designs to make sure that they were compliant 
for the rods that were inserted into them, but the actual mount for the x-axis motor was very challenging. For a start, the motor actually has screws going from the back of the motor all the way to the front versus from front to back on a regular uh, stepper motor, which you might be familiar with. So it actually has these little slots here that take in screws that then lock the motor in place. It wasn't the best approach, but it's all I could really do. And again, it's been designed to not need support material. So there's a bridge here and that actually fills in really nicely without having any need for support. But look at this area here. Now the motor has to have the timing pulley on it and slide into place and then, then be attached. So it needs to be an opening here, but I want to print this part with a bed here because it's all been designed with that in mind to print like that without needing support material. But it's pretty obvious that this area will not print without supports. So what are you to do? Well, you have three options. One, you figure out a way to make it work without supports. Two, you turn supports on. Or three, you design in your own supports and leave supports turned off in your slicer. And that's what I elected to do because you're the modeler and you can intelligently model in supports that you break away afterwards in the areas that you need them. So effectively what we want to do is turn this top area here and here into a bridge because we know a bridge can work without support material. And to do that, I modeled in two little tabs like this. So these two tabs are only 0.5 millimeters thick and I've separated them with a tiny little gap here. And the purpose of them is to turn these top surfaces here from an unsupported ledge into a fully supported bridge. When the slicer prints this, it can run filament across and fully bridge that gap. Is it perfect? No. As you can see with the print off the machine, some of the area with infill wasn't fully supported and it did start to fail. However, these little tabs meant it wasn't very severe and I could break the tabs away and then clean up the part just slightly and I had a fully working print without needing to turn support material on for this area. 0.5 millimeters seems to work quite well on an FDM machine with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. They break away very cleanly because I mean, they're printed vertically. So the layer lines are like the wood grain. It just snaps off where the part begins and ends. Very easy to clean up. And essentially your approach should be to turn everything into a bridge. Therefore, you don't need to have any support material underneath it. It's just gonna bridge across to those built-in supports as you have them. And now for the final tip of the video, and that's if, look, you can't get away with bridging, you can't get away with building in supports, or it would add too much print time to your actual print. Well, sometimes you just have to design things in multiple parts. There's nothing wrong with it, because in some circumstances, it just does not make sense to print things all in one go. And this is a perfect example of that. This is the hot end mount for the Vault-Tec personal fabricator. It's a very complicated part that holds linear bearings in place of zip ties, holds the hot end. And again, it's designed to print without support material. But here's the thing, it's on the X axis of the 3D printer. So therefore it needs some sort of mount for the limit switch. And I must admit, I sort of fussed over where to put the limit switch for a long time. Originally, I was gonna make it move to the extent. So the X max for limits, but I didn't really want to, to play around with that too much in firmware because normally you go to X minimum. So I just stuck with that. But to do that, I need to add the actual limit switch in this space here. And to mount the limit switch in the right place, I would have needed a plastic tab sticking off the back, which made no sense because this was originally designed to print like this with this surface down on the print bed. So what I ended up going with was just a separate tab like this, which screws into place. And this means that I can print the tab separate and the original part separate with no support material and then just attach them together afterwards. It seems obvious, but way too often do I see people make silly compromises to make something work without support material or make things just not look like their design intent just to do that when sometimes it's better off to split things apart and join them together, which is also what I tend to advocate for smaller printers. I'm not a fan of printing a helmet in one go because you know, you're gonna have to fill the whole thing with support material. I much prefer to print it maybe in four pieces and then have uh, slots that join it together. So that's the third tip for this video. Don't be afraid to print parts separately if it means they work better, will be stronger and don't need support material and then just join them together afterwards with a couple of screws like that. 
So that's going to do it for this CAD for Newbies video on designing better 3D prints that don't need support material. But believe it or not, we are not done with this model. There is still quite a few things I want to talk about, which I will talk about in future CAD for Newbies video tutorials. And if you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse, I would love to have you subscribe. It is my aim to empower your creativity through technology. It's still raining extremely heavily. I hope it hasn't been too obvious on the microphone. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly, guys. Catch you later. Bye.